This video is sponsored by Winsor & Newton. Flower and painting. Let's be real. It's hard to get people excited about art when you combine these two words. When you hear flower painting, you're probably thinking of something like this. Or this. Chances are, your first reaction is utter and absolute indifference. Maybe even followed by an eye roll. I know it used to be my response when I was younger. But in this video, I would like to convince you otherwise. I'm gonna show you how I make flower paintings for the 21st century and hopefully the untapped potential of this seemingly old and dusty painting genre. If you're interested in seeing the whole painting process from start to finish, I have good news. You can find an exclusive extended version of this video over at Patreon. It's unnarrated, but it shows you every single brushstroke and it's even a monthly thing now where all patrons get to see at least one extended video that shows the entire process. Here's the game plan. First I create a foundation. Then I paint my main subject, the flowers, then the background, and finally I will finish everything off by amplifying certain aspects of the painting. And we'll get to what that means in a bit. The foundation of this painting is simple. It's basically a collection of brushstrokes. Literally. The first brushstrokes I put down here are some of the most important. At this point, I'm thinking more in terms of calligraphy than traditional oil painting. Every brushstroke serves a purpose and the name of the game is flow and design. While I will eventually paint over many of these parts, some areas will stay exactly as they are right now. And I want all those areas to look as purposeful, clear and fresh as possible. This part is all about creating interesting textures, shapes and designs. So how do you bring a dusty old art genre like flower painting into the 21st century? Well, that's exactly what I was wondering about for the better part of 2018. Four years ago, I started my quest to reinvent flower paintings. And I've painted dozens and dozens of them ever since. And if there's one thing I've learned over the past four years, it's this. There are no such things as dull or boring painting subjects. When you think of flower paintings, chances are the first thing that comes to your mind will be old Dutch flower paintings. Or of course, amateurish flower paintings by hobby painters, but that's a whole different story. Both boring and probably kind of off-putting, at least for most people, but here's the thing. An old Dutch flower painting that's painted meticulously and bursting with symbolism and meaning doesn't speak to us today, mainly because it wasn't painted for a 21st century audience. We have very different design sensibilities today than people in the 1700s. Things that look boring, old or antiquated to us today were state-of-the-art at some point in time. And the only reason it doesn't work for us today is that it wasn't designed for us today. If art doesn't speak to our modern values and design sensibilities, it's sometimes hard to connect to. Simple as that. That's really the heart of the matter. There's nothing intrinsically dull about flowers that makes them less appealing than other painting genres. It's just that you have to bring them to our modern day and age first before you can really appreciate them. And the way you do that is not any different from how Apple designs their phones, to be honest. By using modern day design principles that people today can appreciate and connect to. Simplicity, movement, balance, color palette, those kinds of things. So instead of just putting flowers in front of me and painting them as accurately as possible, I try to follow a simple set of rules. Rule number one, form follows function. And rule number two, design before accuracy. Whether it's the flowers I choose, the colors, or even the canvas size, it all follows the same goal, creating a painting that speaks to a modern audience. For example, it's not a coincidence that I'm painting on a square canvas. You've probably never noticed this, but you rarely come across square paintings when you look at art throughout history. The square, is a pretty modern design shape. Or if you pay attention, some areas of my paintings often almost feel more like digital art than traditional oil painting. And that is because I implement many of the principles of digital painting into the process. 
which makes the final painting always look a bit more clean and modern and vibrant. But speaking of clean and vibrant paint, I would like to take a minute to thank Winsor & Newton for sponsoring this video and for generously providing me with some cool and unique colors and materials for this painting. Since this painting is so simple at its core, it really only has three colors. It's even more important that the whole thing looks as alive and as vibrant as possible. And to achieve this, I use two things in particular. My favorite painting medium, Liquin, which I used to create all the flowing calligraphy-like brush strokes in the beginning and also for the background, but also the color Kinacridone Red, which I used to paint the flower blossoms. One of my favorite red colors that not only packs a punch, but is also incredibly versatile. If you are interested in the rest of the materials that I used in this video, you can find a list of everything down in the description below. So after building a foundation and establishing the color palette for the painting. It's time to double down. The painting already has a ton of modern design traits. Sharp lines, texture, vibrant colors, realism, abstractions, etc, etc. But what I like to do at this point is to amplify and exaggerate all of these things. Almost like a human Photoshop filter. And there are three things I look out for here. Clarity, vibrancy and complexity. Clarity means that I deliberately look for all the areas and edges that look a bit fuzzy and I will clean them up as neatly as possible. Wobbly lines become straight lines, fuzzy edges become sharp and well-defined. You get the idea. Vibrancy means that I will try to make every color in the painting look as clean and as uniform as I can. The background, for example, needs to be absolutely uniform. Since I'm creating abstractions and imperfections myself by destroying some parts of the painting, I want to have full control over all the effects and color variations. And it's so much easier to start from order than from chaos, if that makes sense. And lastly, complexity. Complexity means that I won't just put one color or texture or one element onto the canvas and leave it. I try to make every square inch of the painting look interesting up close by layering paint on top of paint and by creating texture and color variations. This adds complexity to the painting and that makes the painting surface look much more attractive up close. At the end of the day, my goal isn't to paint the most realistic flower or the most meaningful or the most interesting one for that matter. My aim is to create a flower painting that speaks to a modern day audience and their design sensibilities. And ideally, it gets them excited about this dull and dusty genre again. But I'll let you be the judge. What do you think? Are flower still lives your thing or do they make you roll your eyes? Will it always be one of those things that's just a bit less cool than everything else? Or could I win you over with my modern interpretation of it? Or at least get you a bit more interested in it? If not, that's fine, there's still hope though. I have one more very special video coming up on the subject that just might do the trick, but until then friends, thanks a bunch for watching, I wish you all a wonderful and inspiring day and yeah, have a good one.